Today in class, we went over worksheet 20.3 in stage 20. It looks something like this. In order to complete this worksheet, um, we look at pages 163 to 164 in the textbook. So go ahead and turn there. We're going to be referring to the story Remedium Astrologi. We're not actually going to read through the story, but we're going to try to pick out um, verbs and nouns and adjectives of different constructions to try to isolate what those look like. I'm going to enlarge the diagram here so it's easier to see what we're writing as we do. As we go through, you may want to, we're going to start at A, then move to B, C, D, E, F, G, and H. You may want to turn your paper so you're not trying to write upside down. All right, first off, we're going to look in the story and we are looking for present active participles. These are the participles that um, have, that we've been learning about recently. They end in ns, ns, or in the plural, n-t-e-s, n-t-e-s, um, and they're declined like a third declension noun. So our first one, and we're just going to write these on the lines of the spider web. Um, the introduction to your worksheet gives you a little background on why it's a spider web. Um, this is a review, so it's just a fun format to review with. First off, um, if we look, you know, just scanning through, see if you can find any participles. And just, you know, just scan through the story. Um, you can look through on page 163. It does continue on page 164, so don't miss that. The first one that we found in class was Clamantes. And I'll reveal that right there. Clamantes is in line 14. That is one of our um, present active participles. Another present active participle, if you look down one line, you can see at the very end of line 15, you can see exclamants. Now, I'm going to leave the last two for you to find your own, and we'll get to that at the end. Um, but those are two of the, of the present active participles that we found for this. The next thing we're going to look for in section B are infinitives. And I'll just remind you that infinitives end in RE and their verbs. Um, one of the examples that was given in class was a noun that ended in RE. Um, so I'm going to write in our example as we get to it. But our um, You'll, you'll see in a minute where, where I start writing instead of using the one that we've already typed in. But we're looking for verbs that end in RE. They're translated to whatever the verb is. If you look at line 3, and we find the same verb also in line 19, but you see at the beginning of line 3, vulneratus sanare solebat. That sanare is our infinitive. Now I want you to turn the page and look. You can keep scanning through. You'll be finding your own um, in just a minute. But we also have the verb ponere, and that's in line 23. Umerum barbali ponere volo. So I'm going to write in here going to write in here ponere and you can see why I typed these in ahead of time is because it's not nearly as neat when I write it in but you'll go ahead and you'll write and you'll write these in all the way up there are four slots in each web and you can use that to see where each of the the examples are going to go at the end of this, you will have four examples for each part of speech or each construction that's asked for. So our infinitives so far are sanare and ponere. Next up, we're going to look for verbs 
in the first person singular. These can be in any tense, but they are first person singular. The first one we are going to find, um, again, we're, we're staying on this page 164. It's mentioned a few times, but specifically in lines 22 and in line 23. Looking for a first person singular verb, and we find wolo. The next one that we find is also on this page. Um, wolo is easy to spot because it ends in an O. I do want to caution you, though, that not every word that ends in an O is a first person singular verb. Um, some examples we have subito, meaning suddenly, that's an adverb. We have um, postremo, which is another adverb ending in O. You can have nouns like formio, that's a name, it ends in O, but it's a noun. Um, so, so be careful, don't just pick a word that ends in O, make sure it's a verb. We also have the verb emissi, and this is in line 28. Emissi is first person singular, and it's perfect tense. So there's our E from E isti it emus istis erunt. Again, I'm going to leave the top two blank so that you can fill those in at the end. Next up, we're looking for verbs in the present tense. Now, we already talked about one of these from line 21, uh, 22 and 23. We have wolo, so we can use that one again. In general, um, we'll try not to reuse any verbs, but when it came to present tense verbs, we were running a little short, so we doubled up with wolo. Another present tense verb that we found is a being verb in line 19. You'll find the present tense being verb sumus. Okay. Next up, we're going to look for verbs. Those were present tense verbs. Now we're going to find some verbs in the imperfect tense. Imperfect verbs are relatively easy to recognize because they have the telltale bomb, ba, spot, bamu, spotis, or bont ending. So flip back to page 163, and if you look at line 6, at the very end of line 6, you'll find duai ankilai propelectum stabant, and that stabant is our imperfect verb. Looking up at line 2, you will find effluebat. Again, our imperfect verb, easy to recognize because of the bomba spot, bamu spot is bant. At the end, you'll be finding more of these as well. There are a number of imperfect verbs in this story. Now that we've found present tense verbs and imperfect tense verbs, we're just going to keep moving down the tense chain here, and I want you to find some verbs in the perfect tense. Now we've already used emissi. Um, we talked about that over, we talked about that over here. Um, I don't want you to reuse emissi. I think there are enough perfect tense verbs that you can find several others. So let's see, we've got, um, if you look in line 17, we can find Rogawi. That is also a first person verb, but here we're here we're looking at it as a perfect tense verb. In line five, we have intrawerunt. Now be careful as you are looking for perfect tense verbs that you do not mix the erunt perfect ending with an errant pluperfect ending. So just be careful about the U and the A in that ending there. 
Speaking of pluperfect, next up we're going to look for some verbs in the pluperfect tense. Again, we're just scanning through the story and we're looking for verbs that are going to have an eram, era, serat, eramus, eratus, erant on the end. If we look in line three, we don't have to go very far to find these. If we look in line three, we'll find skiderat. Okay, so skiderat is a pluperfect verb. We also, just one line down, have delegawerat. Delegawerat is in line four. The last category that we're looking for are noun adjective pairs. We haven't talked too much about noun adjective pairs, um, but basically we're looking for a noun with an adjective right next to it that modifies that noun. So, um, so yeah, they're just they're paired right next to each other, and it's an adjective that modifies the noun it is right next to. These um, these are a little hard to fit. You're just gonna have to squish them in there because you're trying to fit two words in the same spot. And we have, um, if you look at line 27 toward the end of the story, we have bona medicum, a good doctor. Okay, so we have bona medicum. That's, they're right next to each other and the noun is being modified by the adjective. What kind of doctor? A good doctor. So that's at the end of the story. Go back, way back to the beginning of the story, and you'll find our second example. This is at the beginning of line two. And we have multus sanguis, much blood, or a lot of blood. Um, this, this story is about Barbilus, who has been speared in the shoulder, and how they are trying to help him heal. That's what the story is about for right now. We're not going through and translating the story, um, but that's why you have some of these, these terms, a good doctor, much blood. Um, yeah, those phrases. So those are noun adjective pairs. Just to go through um, your job, your assignment is going to be to finish the worksheet by filling in two more words for each category, for each group of words. So you are going to fill in um, two participles. Okay, so you'll put a participle here and a participle here. You're going to fill in two more infinitives, one here, one here. Two more first person verbs, here and here. So you're gonna go through and you're gonna fill this up and you can turn that in. Um, that's, that is the completion of the assignment and where you will get credit for what we did in class today.